Tell us about King's Roman, because it blew my mind the way it was described. Right, how does it exist? Yeah. And it's not the only one. There's there's like three or four of them in this region now. That that's sort of so about a hundred square kilometers of Lao territory that's just been leased to this Chinese billionaire who's made all of his money out of prostitutes and gambling and drugs, who's on you know the U.S. most wanted list. But they've given him a you know his his own little private kingdom. Here you go. Here's a hundred kilometers of uh, square kilometers of land. He's built. A massive casino, tower blocks. He's got his own police force. He's got his own, you know, fire brigade. It's completely self-governing, and and it's operating as a staging post for you know a, a, a big proportion of the methamphetamine that's coming out of Myanmar on its way to Australia, and no one's talking about it. You know, this this, this is a place where it's, it's. I mean, it's like Sodom and Gomorrah when you go there. It's just full of Chinese tourists who, I mean, mostly young men. Who aren't allowed? To, you know, there aren't big casino towns in in China because gambling's illegal, drugs are illegal. All these, you know, the Chinese come down pretty heavily on you if you're trying to do any of those things in China. But in this place, it's kind of it's all right. You know, child prostitution openly on the streets, yeah. gambling in in casinos, and um, you know, I was there was a photo- photographer friend of mine there, and he, he and I were quite interested, and in, we'd heard you could buy tiger meat in the restaurants, you know, tigers. Yeah. Obviously, in dangers. And uh, every time we asked for it, because we were Westerners, they're like, no, 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 you can't buy it. There's no tigers here. There's no tigers here. And then um, someone said to us, oh, there's some tigers over there. And we we went over and found a bunch of uh, migrant workers playing football in the in the park. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, behind those bushes there. And we went behind the bushes, and there were 12 tigers in cages <laughs> wait, 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 waiting to wait. be served up in the local restaurant. My mate was taking pictures of them, and one of them grabbed one of the tigers. Big paw came out from the cave, yeah. the cage, and gr- grabbed a hold of him. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's another Lucky story. But he ended up in, he ended up one. in hospital having a couple of tetanuses. Um, but yeah, you know, you've got this place, Kings Romans, where people are eating tigers and you know and getting involved in in all of these terrible and nefarious activities, and, and nobody's talking about it. How, how were you and received I, there? Oh, with suspicion, like you know, people were looking at me like, "What are you doing here?" There weren't many, there weren't many non-Asian people walking around in King's Romans. Uh, I met a couple of uh, Ukrainian women who were um, working in one of the online casinos, you know, on the phones. Yeah, um, they were they were about the only people I met there who who kind of who uh, had any sort of Western sensibility at all. And they were as confused as to why I was there as I was as to why they were there, which is why we, we managed to have a brief conversation. But yeah, yeah it, it's now, I mean, King's Romans is now building an airport so that Chinese tourists can fly, you know, directly in there yeah. without having to go through Thailand. And, and no one's talking, talking about this place. I just, it just baffles me. And it's like I said, it's not the only one. There's, there's another one, Mong La further up the river. And, I was interested in how King's Romans fit into the the meth road, if if you like. So, how did the drugs get from Myanmar to King's Romans, and where did they? And how did they then get from King's Romans to the ports in Thailand and Malaysia, from where they get exported to Australia? Yeah. Um, and it's when I got there, I got a bit stuck because no one along that part of the chain wanted to talk to me as a friendly guy, and I was I was you know I didn't really have time to hang out in northern Laos for another couple of months. So that's when I hit on the idea of just posing as a buyer, just saying, look, I've got $250,000 to spend. I want to buy X kilos of methamphetamine. I've I've found a lab in Myanmar that can produce them. Can you help me get them out of, of Myanmar and to the port in Thailand? Um and posing as just posing as that character seemed to seem to work quite well because you know it's taken seriously quite quickly because people just see the dollar signs and they're like oh this guy's got some money that um works. and that's when a that's when the a couple of smugglers came over the uh, the friendship bridge that they've built between Myanmar and, and Laos uh, to to make friends with me and to offer their services and then they started to explain to me how the the smuggling links then worked from Myanmar as far as King's Romans and then from King's Romans on to Bangkok. And then once you got to Bangkok, then 
you know you then you get into a, a into a whole new challenge but like how do you get it then from bangkok into into australia when you met those uh people that came across from myanmar on the friendship bridge they took you across there to get to the uh, meth lab no so i'd already found the meth lab independently they were but the people who were cooking in the meth lab um don't they're not involved in in district distribution beyond myanmar right so that's kind of what I was saying is like there's this it's quite a sophisticated network where um I felt like you know one group of people do their part of the job and then another another group take over doing their part of the job and because you know Myanmar is broken up into these ethnic groups ethnic armed groups who control their own patch of land you might be you know you might be in, in Wa state or you might be in Kokang with and they they're cooking they're cooking meth in their bit and there, or there might be a Chinese triad gang who are cooking in their area, and they're giving them protection. And then another gang will take over, and they'll they'll do the distribution out of that region across the border into Thailand or across the border into Laos. And then you're into a different different ethnic area, and so a different group of ethnic people who know those hills, know those mountains, will take over the distribution of your meth from there to the next place, and then the next place. Right. And then once you're once you're at Bangkok, well, then those people are no use to you anymore. Then you've got to get then you've got to get a ton of meth from from Bangkok to Australia, and then that's generally where you start getting into established commercial trade routes. You know, you want to hide it in chili sauce, or you want to hire it, hide it in you know speakers or cars or something else what, that's what that's coming coming over there in containers. Yeah. 